Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the preaching of your Apostle Paul, you have caused the light of the Gospel to shine throughout the world. Grant, we pray, that we, having his wonderful conversion in remembrance, may show ourselves thankful to you by following his holy teaching. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Indeed, Paul said, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is what I did in Jerusalem. With authority received from the chief priests, I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death. By punishing them often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme. And since I was so furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. With this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. When at midday along the road, Your Excellency, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and my companions. When we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, but get up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they might turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. After that, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem and throughout the countryside of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 67, found in its entirety on page 675 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 67. 
May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. You have heard no doubt of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the Church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me, but I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and stayed with him 15 days, but I did not see any other apostle except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard it said, the one who formerly was persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name but the one who endures to the end will be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today, of course, we celebrate the conversion of St. Paul, and this is um, in some ways linked to this, uh, the celebration that we had last week of the confession of St. Peter. And that week between these two feast days is traditionally observed as a week of Christian unity. You know, there are 51 others we should probably be worrying about too, but there, but there is a week in which we are particularly devoted to the question of 
Christian unity and to at the core of what unites us in the person of Christ as bodies of, as members of the body of Christ. I want also, um, and so of course the witness of Paul is extraordinarily important in that process of um, coming to expand the circle of those with whom we pray and in teaching us in fact about the very image of ourselves as members of the body of Christ. Paul brings those understandings to us. Paul, who did so much as he received this message about outreach to the Gentiles. Paul, who really um, brought the mission to the Gentiles and thus is responsible for my Christian faith, certainly, you know, as someone whose family come from Ireland, we weren't, we weren't born into this. this uh, um, uh, as many of us, I think, have the same experience. That we're all part of the mission to the Gentiles except those of us who are born Jewish. And so we owe Paul this incredible sign of our faith. And we owe in Jesus, through Paul, the understanding that we are adopted into, grafted onto, made one with the promise of God to the people of Israel. It's not a simple thing, that relationship between Christianity and Judaism. And Paul is a key hinge figure, isn't he? In the readings that we have for today, it often um, there's often a lot of enticement to anti-Semitism, to be honest. There, there's a lot about Jews um, persecuting people, Paul himself having persecuted people out of a zealous um, uh, objection to the innovation of the Christian gospel. And I think it's urgent that we remember that Paul, in fact, was a major theologian of a kind of continuity. Paul was deeply devoted to the truth that God has always been the God of the people of Israel and that it is the welcoming of the rest of us, partly through Paul's ministry, that um, has given us the audacity to imagine that it could ever be anything other than that, right? that we would ever come first um, is really just a sign of how warmly in the, in the Gentile to the mission, in the mission to the Gentiles, how warmly God has reached out to all of us. I'd like to call our attention today also, not only to Paul, but to the other half of the title for today, which is conversion. Um, if Paul is known for anything, it's for his spectacular uh, storied conversion. And yes, there's more than one version of the story and that's all complicated for us, but what we know for sure is that Paul was turned around, converso, just turned, <laughs> just turned. And he describes not just having beliefs prior to his conversion, not just having a cultural identity, not just being part of a group, but being, he says, enraged against Christianity, enraged, right? He describes being, um, 150% uh, hostile to Christianity, voting to condemn people to death. He is clear that his conversion is a conversion of every fiber in his being, right? Imagine the spiritual and personal and psychological and cultural and theological and, I don't know, physical revolution that that takes to become someone entirely new. It's really a kind of resurrection in Paul's life. We forget, you know, I've, I've never fallen off a horse, I don't think the rector has, I've never fallen off a horse, I've never been blinded by the presence of Jesus in my life in that way, just struck in that sense. But, you know, I think for a lot of us, if we add up the quiet moments in which our hearts have been opened and the small changes that have crept upon us almost without our being aware, and the new people who have come into our lives, maybe the radically different sense of personal identity and group identification that has come to us, maybe the immensely expanded sense of what is possible, that's a huge conversion. And it would be a good thing for us today to celebrate the turning in our own lives. 
we're all facing something. We're, you know, we're facing this altar today, and we weren't born that way. It's not an utterly natural thing in this world to find ourselves oriented toward Jesus. It's not a particularly reasonable proposition in this world to be dedicated to the coming of the kingdom of God. We strive at St. Mark's to be a community that um, connects all believers to outreach and to mission and to change and to conversion. Even while we are a traditional looking parish that observes practices that are very ancient, we really try and pray that we might be agents of conversion, individually, collectively, for ourselves, for one another, and for the world, which so longs to be turned. Let's not forget that it's an unmistakable sign of the presence of Jesus in our lives that new life comes and that we'll become different people. That makes me want to surrender the old things with a little more willingness, a little more spring in my step, you know, a little less focus on what I'm leave, leaving behind and a little more optimism about what is before me with you in this place and in the church throughout the world. What Jesus has done and is doing and will do it makes me want to drop everything, you know, and run that race to the finish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people are offered according to Form 6, which is found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer and on your mass cards. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are our own. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Sean, Britt, Nicholas, Stephen, and Gordon, my brother and sister priests who worship and work in this place, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For all those who are sick with COVID-19, those who care for them, those who are charged with setting policy in this time of pandemic. For all those who are anxious, for those who live in places of great turbulence, and suffering in Afghanistan, in Ukraine, in Yemen. For all those who have been victims of natural disasters, continuing to remember the people of Tonga. For all those who suffer anxiety and distress of any kind. And for those whom we remember with special care on this day. Chris, Sue, Kent John, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Kathleen, Mark, Ira, Judith, Lucas, Nick, Russell, Wes, John, Donald, David, Joan, Marilyn, Donald, and Matthew, and all those whom we remember in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for the graces of this day, for the gift of the witness of your apostle Paul, for all the gifts that you have given us for ministry in this place, for the staff of this church, for the Servant Year program, for the St. James School, for the Saturday Soup Bowl, for all outreach with other parishes, and for the joyful congregation of your people here. We will exalt you, O God, our King and praise your name forever.
We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. And we remember especially those who have died of COVID-19 in the past day. Lord, let your love and kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vow to the Most High. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbles himself to share. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, blessed be God all, forever. Amen. Come, almighty and eternal God, the sanctifier, and bless this sacrifice prepared for your holy name. Wash away our iniquities and cleanse us from our sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations, and promised to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, blessed Mark the evangelist, blessed Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. God.